welcome back to my channel. So today's case frustrates the ever-loving crap out of me and ever since I started researching it I cannot understand why this case hasn't had more publicity than it currently has. There is just something about this case that screams something is wrong that should be looked into deeper and I feel like nobody is even aware that this person is missing. There has been a Crime Watch Daily episode on this case and that is literally the only way I've had any sort of information on this case because all of the different articles that I've looked at have had the same two rough and tumbled, basic, non-descriptive, horrible paragraphs in them and that's pretty much it. Um, so this is definitely going to be a shorter video. This is definitely a very, very small case, but I have to get the word out there because there is something so incredibly wrong with this and, you know, no one is talking about her. So today we are going to be talking about the disappearance of Cheyenne Cluse. Cheyenne was 22 years old when she disappeared from Chicago on December 1st, 2017. So this case is not incredibly old compared to a lot of the cases that I've covered. Cheyenne was a bubbly, well-liked, outgoing young woman. She thrived off of attention and love and fun and social media, but all of that seemed to change before her disappearance. Diane was going through an incredibly rough time right before she disappeared. She was very, very, very close to her mother, but she ended up right before her disappearance watching her mother slowly and painfully pass away from liver failure. And this absolutely destroyed her, but this wasn't even the only loss she suffered in such a short period of time. Right after her mother passed away and she was trying to cope with that, she also ended up losing her dog. So the two things that she loved the most and made her world go round had been taken from her. So now the once bubbly, happy young woman was very reserved and grief stricken and she didn't go out as much and she wasn't as happy and she didn't say much on social media. She was in a pretty deep depression suffering from losing both her mother and her dog and it took her a while to even somewhat get out of it. Diane slowly started coming out of her shell and she had plenty of people there waiting to console her. Cheyenne is absolutely stunning. She is so beautiful. She has the most beautiful smile, amazing eyes, beautiful hair, and she already had so many young men interested in her solely based off the way she looked. And it was something that she was very used to, but there's something about a grieving and vulnerable young woman that brings even more men knocking at her door and not necessarily the good kind. And because she was in such a state of mind and she was suffering and struggling so much, her decision making seemed to not be the absolute best because she was hurting so badly that she just wanted anything that would take the pain away, anything to numb out the way she was feeling. And unfortunately, it led her to some troubling times. Cheyenne had recently started hanging out with a 38 year old man named Brian who was helping her get through these hard times she was going through. Not in necessarily an emotional way, but his way of helping her out was by taking her to parties and basically just constantly exposing her to drugs, alcohol. Now, Brian wasn't normally someone that Cheyenne would hang out with, especially because he was almost two decades older than her. But her loss of her mother was really bringing out a different side of her, as I said before, and her best way of coping was by partying, and Brian had plenty of that to offer. Despite her friends' and family's concerns, she kept hanging out with questionable people to keep her pain at bay. Her best friend, Chad, was one of those people that was really concerned about her well-being. So Chad was specifically hesitant about Christine and Brian's relationship and was keeping a very close eye on them. Cheyenne and Chad had been friends for a very long time and they had always been incredibly close. And because of this, Chad saw 
all of the different young men who would try to get Cheyenne's interest. And most of these young men would approach her for their own benefit and because of her looks and not necessarily with her in mind. And having witnessed enough of those situations, he was always the one there to protect her. Now, this is kind of an interesting bit of this story to me because Chad and Cheyenne had a very interesting relationship and I can't quite figure out the dynamics of it and I will get a little bit into it later on because he comes into a lot, a lot of people's theories. So on November 27th, right after Thanksgiving, Cheyenne left home with her laptop and a change of clothes or two and no one's 100% sure what exactly she left with. She didn't pack like a suitcase or anything but she did bring a few belongings with her. And that's because Brian had set up an Uber to pick her up and take her to his home in Chicago, Illinois. So they had an entire day and night of partying planned, just the two of them. So I'm not quite sure if this is, again, a relationship setting or if they were just friends, but they drank and they partied all night together. And she seemed to be having a really good time with Brian until about a day and a half later. So right after sunrise, Chad started getting text after text after text after text from Cheyenne. And this was early, early morning, as I said, just after sunrise. And he didn't see the text messages for maybe about 20 minutes after she sent them because he had been sleeping. I'm pretty sure she tried to call him a few times. And when he saw them, he immediately knew something strange was going on. So Cheyenne kept saying, babe, call me, please answer. Why aren't you texting me? Babe, please come and pick me up. I need you to pick me up. And he was at this point kind of confused and in a panic. So he was like, you know, babe, what's going on? I'm sorry, I just woke up. I didn't immediately get your text message. And he got no response, so he started calling Cheyenne and he still received no response. So because she kind of made it seem like it was a little bit urgent and he was always the one she would reach out to if she was in any sort of trouble, Chad decided to get in touch with Brian and see what exactly was going on. You know, where is she? What is she doing? Why was she acting funny? Did she leave? Did she ever get a ride? And Brian didn't seem to have any of these answers. So according to Brian, he had actually been asleep for the last 18 hours. And he says that when he woke up from this sleep, Cheyenne was gone and he had absolutely no idea where she went. This was odd to everybody because Cheyenne didn't have a car and she had absolutely no money on her. So no one was sure how she would have gotten away from Brian's house since Chad wasn't the one to pick her up. They didn't know of anyone else who would have possibly given Brian a ride and I'm not sure at this point that anyone was sure Brian had a car since he did send an Uber to get Cheyenne and didn't drive her himself. So people at this point were very confused. And then to top it off, somehow in a 20 minute time span, she went from constantly texting Chad asking for him to come and get her and then all of a sudden silence. For days, Cheyenne didn't show up at her home, didn't get in contact with any of her friends or her family, she didn't touch any of her socials, and this wasn't like her at all. Cheyenne occasionally had gone over to a friend's house for maybe a week, a week and a half, but even when she did that, she always maintained contact with somebody, but not a single person had heard from her since Chad heard from her that morning. And as I said, she didn't have a car, she didn't have money, she couldn't have possibly gone anywhere without someone's help, and the last person known to be with her had no idea where she went. Her friends and family waited, hoping that maybe she was just going through a rough patch mentally, but something completely unexpected happened. 12 days after Cheyenne disappeared, a phone call was made to 911 from her cell phone. But before the caller said anything or even the dispatcher was able to say anything, the caller hung up. At this point, they had no idea if Cheyenne herself was the one who made the phone call, so their next best option was to find out where the phone call was made and go from there. The same day that the phone call was made was also the same day that Cheyenne's father reported her as missing finally. While Cheyenne had been struggling with her mother's death, she loved her life and the people that were left around her and it would have been completely unlike her to run off. 
She also just didn't have the means to do so. Now, something that I find very interesting about that entire statement and bit of information is that authorities stated they believed the call was made to throw off the investigation, but the call was made the exact same day she was filed a missing person. And I would be very interested to know when she was filed a missing person and when the call was made because them assuming that makes me think that she was filed a missing person before the call was made and to me that says that it would have had to have been someone close to the situation that would have known she was reported pretty quickly after it happened because when someone's reported missing it's not automatically thrown all over the news or anything like that usually it just kind of circulates on facebook or instagram or twitter things along those lines and you know normally you have to be friends with someone to see information or you have to be constantly looking on things like that to figure out within the same day possibly within a few hours that someone was reported missing. So either Cheyenne knew she was reported a missing person and immediately, you know, called to throw everybody off or whoever did something to her was absolutely not a stranger because they would have had no idea she was reported a missing person that fast. So I honestly wonder who knew that exact day that Cheyenne was reported missing. Was it posted to Facebook? Did someone in her family say something? I'm sure they had been speaking for a while that they couldn't get in contact with her, but I wanna know if someone went out and specifically stated they filed her as a missing person. So, outside of that, authorities tracked the ping and it led to a tower near Mallard Lake Forest Preserve, about 20 miles away from where she was with Brian and 18 miles away from her own home. Authorities searched the reserve on December 22nd and they searched it again four months later in hopes that the conditions would be more favorable for a productive search. They used over 100 searchers and five cadaver dogs to comb through the entire area. The one thing that they didn't do that absolutely shocks me again because everything in this case kind of shocking me um, is that they never actually checked any of the lakes or the ponds so the reserve has like a, I think one big giant lake and then a few different small ponds around it and if it were me and I were doing a search for someone that potentially met with foul play in this location and I think it's pretty safe to assume that because it was a 911 phone call I would be searching the water. You know, I understand a ground search. That's absolutely justified. But why on earth would you not search the water? Authorities have said that they did find a few items in this search, but they have no idea if they are in any way, shape, or form linked to Cheyenne. They have not denied or confirmed that information yet. And they also haven't said exactly what it is that they found. But authorities weren't in the search alone. A nonprofit group, the Missing Persons Awareness Network, recruited a mass amount of searchers to go through the preserve as well. And their hope was to again maybe find her cell phone, but from what I have seen, they found nothing. So that is literally all the information they have on this case. There is nothing more that's been released. Brian claims to have slept 18 hours straight and woke to Cheyenne missing. The story is incredibly suspicious and he's one of the first people your mind jumps to when it comes to foul play, but authorities have said and been very strong in their standpoint that he is not even considered a person of interest. According to authorities, he has been more than cooperative with them. He's let them search his home, he's let them search his phone, his records, anything they need their hands on, he has willingly given over to authorities. But Cheyenne's family and friends are not at all convinced that Brian doesn't know more information at the very least than what he's letting on. After all, he was the last person to see Cheyenne and be with Cheyenne and his story doesn't really make a lot of sense. Crime Watch Daily even tried to get in contact with him. They went to his house, they contacted him on Facebook, they tried to call him and received absolutely no response. And then they ended up finding out why. He was in jail for possession of a firearm and narcotics. And to many, this kind of solidifies the idea that he just wasn't a great guy and could have potentially done something to Cheyenne. She wouldn't have had a car to go anywhere. She didn't have any money to pay anybody. And authorities haven't released that she tried to get anyone else to pick her up 
other than Chad. Her text to Chad did seem very frantic, almost like she was trying to escape. It's like all of a sudden something happened and she immediately needed to be picked up. It wasn't a matter of, oh, well, he can Uber me home like he Ubered me here. It seemed like an emergency situation. And then a random phone call coming from her phone 20 miles away to 911 where someone hung up and the only way we know she could have been transported is either by hitchhiking from a stranger or possibly getting there on foot. There's just a lot of different strange possibilities and none of them really scream that she went off on her own will. This case frustrates me so badly because I feel like there should be more answers. It's almost infuriating to go through the 10 plus pages of Google and realize 90% of that information is just BS links to something that's completely unrelated and then the few articles that are there have done nothing for her. There is just nobody out there talking about her. Brian seems to be caught up in a pretty rough crowd and heavily involved in drugs and it makes you wonder if maybe some sort of accident happened. Maybe she didn't realize how deep she was in something potentially illegal. Because if you think about it, she was just looking for some fast fun, some easy fun. And you see something as exciting and what if she found out he had all these other things he was involved in and she would have nothing to do with it. Maybe when she found all this out, she tried to text Chad to get out of there. But at that point, she knew too much and Brian couldn't let her go anywhere. On top of that, if he was involved in a lot of heavy drugs, that could mean he had a lot of enemies and maybe one of these enemies knew he had this interest in this beautiful young woman and their way of threatening him was somehow getting their hands on her and taking her away. You know, there's just so many different possibilities here because one minute she was fine and then 20 minutes later, she just seemed to disappear off the face of the earth. And to me, you don't ask for help and to be picked up before you plan to run away. That screams foul play. A lot of people believe she was possibly picked up by someone, but again, there would have probably been evidence about this in her phone. They know and confirmed she had been texting Chad, but there wasn't any evidence that she was contacting anybody else. I also am still so hung up on the 911 phone call. I strongly, strongly personally believe that the cell phone is in one of those lakes or ponds. And I find it absolutely wild that they have not gone to check it yet. I know they said there was potential that would be a later search, but if the scenario played out like I stated before, the missing person report was filed and then on the same day the 911 call was made, to me, that screams that somebody panicked. It seems like whoever made that phone call, if it wasn't Cheyenne, freaked out, went to a massive area that will be very difficult to search or was near a body of water and probably made the call, turned the phone off, chucked it in the water and ran. I fail to see a reason as to why Cheyenne would make the phone call herself. And I also fail to see how she possibly could have been out there for 12 days managed to keep a cell phone alive on foot with no money. Now, obviously there's always potential that there is someone out there that had been helping her, but I feel like there would have to be at least some clue of that along the way and there just isn't one. And then there's the theory that some people believe that she wanted to end her life. She had lost her mother and that really negatively impacted her and her life. And it's not something she could ever really escape from. But the biggest thing I can't really get around when it comes to the suicide theory is that she wanted to leave, obviously. And then all of a sudden in 20 minutes, there's nothing from her. And if she disappeared to maybe end her life, you know, why would she have reached out to Chad? You know, maybe she was kind of screaming for help and hoping he would come and save her from the thoughts that she had. That's a high, high possibility. And maybe the fact that he didn't answer right away made her feel really, really defeated. But then you would assume that would mean she would have immediately ended her life. And that means it makes no sense that her phone showed up 12 days later in the preserve. Probably the one theory that makes me scratch my head the most is the one that I've seen the most of out of all the theories. And that is that Chad had something to do with it. A lot of people seem to question 
Chad's feelings for Cheyenne and I can see where they're getting to that sort of theory. But they wonder if maybe Chad had a lot more feelings for Cheyenne than he would let on. And I think people are really led to this because of the Crime Watch Daily episode in specific because Crime Watch Daily states on there that he was friend zone. Now that could totally be something they made up, which is very important to recognize. And a lot of people believe that maybe he was tired of being friend zoned, that he was always there for her, always there to help her, but then she always gave her attention to these bad guys like Brian that were heavily involved in all of the wrong activities and maybe he was tired of seeing her with crappy people and snapped. My mind is just spinning and I cannot get over the fact that there's this much bizarre information and this many theories happening but there's just no coverage on this case and at this point it's hurting the rest of her family because they already lost her mom and Cheyenne's aunt was told by Cheyenne's mom before she passed away she said my one thing that I want you to do is to watch after my daughter so now Cheyenne's aunt is incredibly upset because she feels like she wasn't able to even accomplish that for her sister and it's just a horrific heartbreaking mess so when i really started reading into the story and finally seeing some of the information i knew that this is just one of those cases that's going to just be with me forever and ever and ever and it's going to continuously bother me and i needed to spread her information and story out there because this girl i just feel like everyone's forgotten her and she just disappeared and that messes me up so bad and i obviously don't mean her family but it's just no one latched her story in the media and maybe that's the one thing that's preventing her case from being solved people need to be pushed people need to come forward because i don't believe she ran away of her own will and neither does her family and neither do authorities so someone out there knows something and they're just refusing to talk and they need to feel some sort of pressure to come forward because not a single bit of this makes sense. So let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think is the most likely theory or if there's something that I've missed that you know about or some sort of connection out there, or even other theory that I haven't seen spoken about anywhere else. I wanna thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to hear Cheyenne's story and make sure you share her story anywhere that you possibly can because do a Google search yourself it's almost as if she doesn't exist anymore. And because exposure is everything for these cases and in the end it could end up solving them. And I hope that's the case for Cheyenne. But on that note guys, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to become a part of the Howland fam so we can bring them home together. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.